Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome, and thank you for coming to my session at ApacheCon Asia 2022, uh, where we talk about building super contributors in the Luxio open source community. My name is Jasmine. I run the open source effort at Alexio, as well as developer relations and developer experience. Uh, I'd like to here also express my appreciation to my partner in crime and running the open source a community at Alexio, Bin Fan. Bin is a founding member and are currently serving as a VP of open source at our company. So together we've built this open source program from the ground up. Uh, Bin and then the engineering team led by Bin uh, has contributed significantly to the following projects I will be sharing today. So kudos to them. And this talk, here's the agenda for today's talk. Uh, this talk will provide a deep dive into the methodology and framework we used in building Alexio open source community. I'll share our experiences in how to integrate open source in the company's business model. And by building a flywheel with super contributors, we're able to build a system such that the community generated a growth on its own will result in ROI that benefit all departments in the company as a whole. And of course, we'll also go beyond to the super contributors and share some of the other projects that could also help you to build your open source strategy. Now let's quickly take a look at, uh, take a little bit of time to provide you with some of the ideas of what the Luxio Open Source Project is in case you're not familiar with it. Uh, we started at UC Berkeley's AMP Lab as a research project. Uh, back then it was called the Tachyon Project. Uh, so after seven years now, we have a very large and vibrant open source community with over 1200 contributors and still growing with over 9000 members on our developer community Slack. And then we're also recognized as a top 10 most critical Java based open source pro project by Google and OpenSSF. Uh, we're also named as one of the most valuable repositories on GitHub. So this is where I would like to urge every one of you to check out our community Slack with all the de other developers. And then if you'd like to join the rest of them and the members to see what we have to offer in our open source community. Uh, this is throwback what Alexio Open Source was like in 2015. Um, I've stolen those slides from the AMP Lab retreat uh, back in 2015. Uh, and some of you, you know, if you've been around for a while in the big data industry, you might be more familiar uh, with the project called Tachyon. That was Alexio. That still is Alexio. <laughs> so um, when we first built it, it meant to address a set of specific problems for its a sister project called Spark, uh, which is about four years older, born and raised in the same lab uh, at UC Berkeley. Now, as you can see, both of the products have evolved since then. So what is Alexio now after this many years? We are a large distributed system that is a new layer between the compute engines and the storage system. And this new layer provides a complete visualization across all data sources to serve data to applications and who do not need to care about the location of the data. And this solution is applicable across all environments, whether it's in the cloud or on-premise or bare metal or containerized. We do have two versions of Alexio. Uh, one is Community Edition CE version that is open sourced. And one is Enterprise Edition EE version that of course helps a company to generate revenue. And as a product, we have seen thousands of organizations using Alexio. We've seen success across verticals with technology companies leading the way. Uh, and a more regulated market such as financial services and pharmaceuticals with stricter security needs have also adopted Alexio. As you could see, the Alexio open source community and Alexio as a company and a product are thriving right now. Uh, but it's not always the case. Uh, there were a lot of time, there were times when we were a bit confused and we did not have a dedicated community team until 2019. What happened in 2019 was great news for us because we found their light. In 2019, we've included the open source as a key component of the company's business model and then involved company's business resource to build the open source project as well as endorsing the open source community. Now, this decision had its merit, uh, as the business model of Alexio is to sell the enterprise edition, the EE version, 
by having a broader CE version adoption that can largely influence the EE version sales and the conversion. This is where I take a moment to brag about what we have achieved since we've integrated the open source into the company's business model after the, a couple years of effort. Um, so of course we started making more uh, progress in the community marketing, in the content marketing and tracking is keeping track of everything that's in the open source. As you could see, uh, we've kickstarted an event series called Alexio Day, for example, that we meet uh, bi-monthly to start it with. And then we start meeting about monthly. Those are meetups with multiple speakers coming from different companies and talk about at talk at each event um, and it's still going on right now and so we've also have um, you know 84 live developer community uh, meetings and online office hours and, oh and on top of Lux Day we also have other webinars that are going on as well of course we've gener generated quite a few technical content and blogs that posted in multiple languages and as an effort, we've also showed our appreciation and promoted those who has made significant contributes, contributions to our open source community. We've promoted five new PMC members and one new PMC maintainers. We've also created a, a new level of our contributors called committers. And there were two people that were promoted for their achievement as well. And I'm very proud to say about one third of the pull requests that merged in GitHub just in last year coming from uh, the community contributors alone. So those are all the data uh, that wraps up 2021, which was last year. And this year we are looking forward to see even better results. So now that we've given you a little taste of the open source program here at Aluxio, uh, let's move on to the very meaty part of this talk where we share the methodology and framework in building such program. Uh, when my partner Ben and I first started the open source team, we were hoping to find the secret sauce for community growth. Uh, the first thing was to find out who are those people uh, in the existing community Slack channel, and then what are their levels of usage, why are they here in the first place, what are they doing there? So we found uh, there are different kinds of people. There are relatively new members, there are somewhat uh, experienced users, and of course, there are also very experienced contributors. The new members probably don't contribute yet. Uh, the experienced users, uh, they've already been around, uh, they've been using, probably downloaded and deployed Alexio somewhere and been using it. Uh, and our experienced contributors are ones who would even tweak a little bit in our code base and there's some issues and PRs and et cetera. Uh, so once we've identified those, uh, our step two is to uh, see if we can build a system uh, such that the community can generate growth on its own given the right input. Uh, basically, we wanted to build a flywheel for our community growth. Now, you may know that the flywheel model is taken based on the concept from Jim Collins' book, Good to Great. But to put it simply, the central idea is that your customers are your best salespeople. Now, if you can make them happy, they can go tell their friends. And then the business growth focuses on using the momentum of those happy customers to drive referrals and repeat sales. Now, in our case, when building an com open source community, we want to make those experienced user happy customers so that they can be the force to generate enough momentum that can bring in new users. Now, right now you can see on this graph that those lines are a little choppy, a little dotted because it's not happening yet, it wasn't. <laughs> so our goal is to close that loop with a solid line. Now take a look at this graph, you might notice some difference <laughs> so, but, you know, from this one and the previous one. It turns out there may be a missing piece. Uh, let's take a look at the community members' activities based on the profiles we discovered earlier. Um, ideally, there are four kinds or four steps of activities of an open source member. Uh, they can discover the project and they can try out uh, this project and they can contribute and then eventually, hopefully, they will advocate for this open source project. Now, if we match those steps or those activities, we will see that our new members are the ones who discover the such project. And our users are the ones who probably download it and try out. And then there are contributors that are ones that, you know, by definition, contributed to the code base. Um, but who are the ones that advocate? So it turns out we're missing the super contributors. And now by adding super contributors in this graph, we are able to close the loop for the flywheel. So how do we nurture super contributors? 
now that found the missing piece. We believe that designing a killer developer experience for the potential super contributors is critical. I took this graph from the DevRel book and that explains the key components for a great developer experience. Now I would like to remind you here uh, that there might be many different, uh, different kinds of super contributors that will be need to uh, design different developer experiences based on those super contributors personas that we'll discuss later. So what are the steps in designing developer experiences? Um, it's actually pretty straightforward. You know, first you find out who's who, uh, and then you identify and then select the ones um, that you want to nurture, and then you collaborate with the ones that are selected. Now, I do want you to uh, pay close attention to the second steps. So that's where, you know, in each company, it may vary. In our case, in particular, for example, we did a three-dimensional measurement for each target that they, we uh, ended up selecting. Um, the, the first dimension is we took a look at the company and the organization this co particular contributor come from. Now that has to do with the B2B nature uh, of our product. <laughs> so the ultimate user of Aloxio or buyer are guaranteed to be a, a company instead of an individual consumer. It is very unlikely that a college student is doing his homework with Aloxio and then they will be the buyer. <laughs> but it's more likely someone who is working as data in engineer, infrastructure engineer, in a big company that they're deploying Alexio because they have actual use case that kind of needs for it. So then the second dimension uh, is the use cases when we're looking at those uh, potential uh, super uh, users, super contributors. Um, so the use cases means you're looking at the problems they're trying to uh, solve by using Alexio. There are some possibilities, like ideally you find uh, someone who is you know, trying to deploy Alexio using Alexio in the exact way that you expect them to use. Would that be wonderful if you're a developer, you're like, I solved this problem. Now people can adopt my tool and use it exactly the way I designed it. Uh, that's good. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's even better when someone come in with a use case uh, that can help to expand your territory, that they can um, help to explore like, you know, on the edge, new use cases that you do not expect, but that would be a good direction for your product to go. Uh, of course, there are also times when people come in, they're trying to solve the problem that just simply impossible or just go into the, the wrong direction where your product wants to go. So then we need to filter those through. Uh, and then the third dimension is we, of course, we look at the individual themselves, uh, because at the end of the day, when we're speaking of contributors, we're looking at, at persons, each individual humans. So we do want to align personal interest and help them to achieve their own goal. Uh, once we measure those three dimensions, then of course, we move to the third step where we collaborate with those individuals. All right. So we were very well aware by including open source in our company's business model, uh, we are measured by uh, ROI. At the end of the day, we're not spending money to trying to reach developers because we love spending our company's money uh, or spending time to help them just because we have so much time on our hands. Uh, we were doing it because we're expecting positive returns of our investment um, on what we spent. So that means over the time, uh, over time, what we need this effort to result in uh, new users, new revenue, and new territory, and much more. So uh, when it comes to super contributors, we expect them to be our champion, uh, our subject expert, a technical lead, um, and then possibly economic buyer, and so much more. Um, following, I'm going to go through four examples with different kind of super contributors uh, and an ROI we got from those different portfolios so that they can give you a better, uh, a more detailed explanation of what I meant here. The first example we'll show you is the super contributors uh, uh, for a special interest groups uh, led by the super contributors. Uh, we've noticed as uh, users are using Alexio in breadth and depth, uh, we've seen the community organically uh, organized to, to make faster progress by working together. So as the organizers of such community, we've took it upon ourselves to form uh, special interest groups to push forward such progress. Uh, what do the special interest group do? Uh, we meet together regularly, <laughs> virtually, uh, and to discuss issues, features, bugs, optimizations, and roadmap. Uh, so the one example I put on the slides um, is uh, an, 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 a special interest group where our core maintainers uh, worked closely with engineers coming from Microsoft, Alibaba, 
and Nanjing University to investigate running deep learning workloads on Aloxio. Uh, when this special, what the, the ROI that we achieve from this particular effort uh, is that first we're able to expand our ecosystem uh, and actually even give birth uh, to a new open source project called Fluid under CNCF. And then, um, and two, uh, we pioneered a new machine learning deep learning scenario uh, for Aluxio. Uh, and three, uh, we actually, based on that progress, we made a new progress uh, play, a process playbook uh, for a special interest group, uh, for a special interest group as such. So now following that playbook of following a similar process, we are leading a new effort for uh, the special interest group in running Presto on Aluxio. And we have kicked off the community sync on, in this direction it was engineers from Tencent and Robin Hood joining and co-lead that effort. So that was our first example. Uh, our second example uh, of circle contributors uh, are the cross-community key collaborators. Um, so the collaboration with Presto that I mentioned actually goes way back before it would even form the open source team. It does not just start from the special interest group to meeting. Uh, back then, uh, Facebook, now Meta's uh, pr uh, pr Presto team, uh, has played a key role in kicking off the initial collaboration. And together, we build RaptorX. Um, oh, some of you might notice I've included uh, the link that introduced Raptor X and as well as some of the other more technical content uh, in the slide that you'll be able to download and click on the link should you be interested in those, the details of those. Um, okay, let's get back to this example. So the, what is the uh, ROI that we got from a cross-community collaboration with super contributors? Uh, one, uh, you might notice that those Presto contributors, they went from a non-user leapfrogged to be a super contributors. Uh, and then uh, the second benefit we got them is we were actually were able to tap into given access to a top tier community uh, to learn from the Presto community and then their committers and how they build and how, uh, you know, pretty much everything they were doing, they were working on. And of course, during that process, uh, we were able to make new friends. Uh, those friends are all technically strong and passionate about open source. And they're quite experienced in this world as well, in the big data world already. And then four, a fourth benefit we got that, if you're an engineer manager, you'll be very happy to hear that, that we were able to tap, tap into a very good talent pool, as you could tell, uh, when we were working with those uh, you know, developers. And at the end of the day, we were able to recruit uh, quite a few friends from that community. Um, and of course, uh, last but not least, uh, when this process wrapped up, we established a new process playbook. And now this playbook is being applied in our new establishment and new cross community coll coll collaboration with Uber and TikTok. All right, third example. I did say I was going to give you four examples. <laughs> so we move on to the third one. Uh, third one is uh, your PMC. So uh, your PMC are, you know, it's right at hand. If you think the first two are a little bit difficult because you just started your project, uh, the third one should be achievable for most of the open source uh, community uh, managers to take a look at. Uh, your PMC are your project management committee members. Uh, by definition, those are your expert users and they are also technically pretty strong. They have a good capability to help you to improve your project in a technical level. And the ROI you can always get from those uh, PMC members is uh, they helped, they already definitely did adopt your product. And they can also help you refine the product and scale the product. And of course, they can provide your product feedback and then a critical product feedback at a scale that is only possible at a very few leading companies in the industry. And as individuals, like I mentioned, those are they will, can provide strong in engineer output, including leading specific features in your open source releases. And then, of course, they can also join you to hope to join uh, to host an a joint open uh, source event uh, or to participate in your joint event. And then they can end up producing lots of high quality content to share with all the other open source users. Okay, our last example of the super contributors <laughs> is when the super contributors turn to become an economic buyer. Now, that would be ideal when a company is saying like, oh, we're open source, but we're looking for conversion. Uh, so I do want to assure you that this could take a while, but it does happen. Uh, we've seen it happen in Aluxio. Um, so 
how the, there are a few components that are quite critical uh, to push forward this effort to make it happen that I've listed there. Uh, developer education plays a quite important role in this part. Uh, so as um, we also need to have quite well defined difference between the community edition, the open source one and the enterprise edition. Uh, the, and then developer education is to show those people to make your contributors and make whoever the users to understand uh, those well-defined differences uh, and the features as well. And then you just have to wait for the right moment for that to happen. And of course, the ROI you got uh, when the super contributor turned into economic fire is you got that immediate revenue gain for the company. And then also at right now, you would have an internal open source and community champion from the community side uh, that is now an economic buyer in your customer base. All right, now that we've closed the flywheel, but you've noticed my slides has not come to an end yet <laughs> because um, uh, to give an example, um, you know, go ahead and take those examples. Uh, you know, we've given you some examples and I, I wish you can uh, take those examples and apply this in your open source strategy. Uh, it's all great, uh, but uh, we don't wanna stop there um, because um, we want to make sure uh, that you're gonna fine tune your flywheel and it's a ever, going on ongoing adjusting effort, you know, maintaining the process once you have it. Uh, why is that important to constantly adjust your flywheel? Uh, because your resource is always limited, right? Uh, so uh, the community team, both for your open source team, the community team or ecosystem team, your company, or the internal team and uh, your open source community at large are evolving over time. Uh, so we should not stick to the same model the whole time. Uh, and then your output metrics may be changing. Um, and then what you will need to do to, uh, to tune your flywheel is you will need to tune your input action in order to match those output metrics when they changes um, so, that to, so that we can adjust the effort and then the uh, resource allocation. How do we tune that then? <laughs> we gotta go beyond uh, the super contributors. <laughs> so uh, for example, uh, recall that when we include to the open source strategy into the business model. The goal is to benefit the company as a whole. So when you think about fine tuning your flywheel, uh, you uh, want to think about the ROIs you're trying to get and the benefit, like what's the most pressing, uh, I would say the priority benefit that you want to get uh, from your flywheel. So um, sometimes we'll, we'll, when we want to benefit the company as a whole, we adjust the team makeup as well as the projects to look into it, for example. Uh, when a marketing needs it, we, uh, we provide the content and we provide community events and add content strategy to it uh, for the things that you provide to the product team. Uh, you'll provide product feedback. You may even add a product manager on your open source team, ecosystem team, and you can add a community product manager to do that uh, on and off. And then um, on the sales side, of course, uh, when, a, when someone, uh, your contributor turned into an economic buyer, you want to follow up and you can provide them insights and influence. And an engineering team, there's always a joint development going on. And then the second step is that you design an internal system that tracks the contributions. In our case, um, you know, uh, when you know, when you adjust it, you, you do want to have a metrics to refer to, right? You don't want to just be by good faith or good feeling. Be like, oh, I feel like adjusting right here and then I'm going to tune it. Uh, that would not be good. So the metrics that we started uh, was an internal system uh, that sort of have a point system to measure. Uh, we did come up on our own. Uh, we refer to, we um, check references of a few other uh, existing sort of metric trackers. Uh, it did not feed to our needs so that we ended up designing a system. What it pretty much is, it, is, it sort of gives each activity a specific allocated point so we can see uh, you know, where we will receive more of activity, where we have a reduced activity uh, to, to diagnose it. And then um, a third uh, you know, a way to adjust your flywheel, you can always adapt and adopt in a localized strategy. As some of you might notice right now, we do not just have an open source community in the US and Europe and APAC area. We also have an open source community in China that's our Chinese speaking community. So, uh, and then our, Chinese, uh, our China team actually ran a new experiment with a gamification system uh, that if you're a Luxie user, uh, you might already see them <laughs> working on that. And I would urge you to participate uh, in their new campaign. Uh, so we, 
that's uh, experimental developer marketing. And so to help us to both generate quick wins and uh, provide uh, timely rewards and satisfaction to our users. It basically acts a loyalty program. The more you engage with the community, the more points you accumulate, and then we'll be giving you gifts based on the activities you engage with. All right, takeaways. And now you've come and shown all of the examples and also urge you to fine tune your flywheel. Uh, what have you learned today? So an ecosystem is a multi-dimensional team. Uh, an ecosystem team is a multi-dimensional team. Uh, when forming your team uh, that building open source, uh, think about how you could provide feedback to each department on its own. And if you're currently forming your open source strategy or your ecosystem uh, team, I hope that after this talk, you can uh, go home and define your flywheel, find that missing piece and discover your super contributors and keep adjusting your flywheel and to make it even better. Okay, last but not least, and thank you very much for tuning in today. I really appreciate that you're coming here to my talk. Uh, I would like to invite you to check out our website, uh, join our community developer uh, channel, and follow us on social media. Um, there's our LinkedIn. Uh, we also do have a, if you are uh, a Chinese uh, speaking community member uh, and in China, we do have our uh, WeChat uh, public channel as well. Uh, so please do follow them as well. Thank you so much for coming.